Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So I'm going to do a little bit of man couches today. If you guys are not familiar, uh, you probably recognize the voice. Um, Three River Blades makes the knives, okay? I make the knives under Three River Blades. Three River Kydex is where I make all the other stuff. So there are two different websites. You have to check the links down below uh, to get to the right one. Uh, what I do is typically if I make a knife, I'm making a Kydex sheath. That same Kydex material will allow me to make holsters and pouches and all kinds of other cool stuff. So that was the only reason for that. All the links for those two different types of products will be down below along with Patreon. Now, if you guys uh, have not done so, please become a Patreon member. It only costs you a dollar a month. And if you stick around for 12 months, that's 12 bucks. So you supported me by sending me 12 bucks for the year. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Any little bit helps, guys, so thank you for that. Uh, also, uh, like, subscribe, share this video, get it out there. Let's build this channel. I'm trying to build it as, as uh, fast as I can. Uh, we don't know uh, how long we're going to be on this platform, which is why I have the MeWe and Parlor and all the other ones that are not specific to the YouTubes. So I just want to make sure that we have enough people here that if we need to cross platforms we can and there will be no disruption in any of the stuff that I do. So what we're going to do today is I have Kydex material. This is multicam. This is a customer's order. All right, Somebody wants uh, multicam and they want a double mag pouch. All right, This is a mold for Glock 17s. It will also fit Glock 19 and of course Glock 26. Anything in the 9 or 40 caliber, um, this mold will work, all right, depending on how deep you make it or how short you want to cut it off. Now, I do have two Glock magazines. These are Glock 17 magazines. You can use these. I recommend that you don't. If you can get the mold, get the mold. And the reason is, is because if you mess these up, they won't work in your gun anymore. This is just for product test fit. And, of course, make sure you have ammunition in it. Because if you are going to wear this with ammunition, you need to test it with that. There are no guns around here. There's no weapons of any sort. So I don't mind filling up the magazines because I don't have a handgun on me. Okay, so that works out. What we're going to do is we are going to compress two pieces of Kydex. Okay, two pieces of Kydex around a mold. And then we're going to make a form. And then we we're going to put on belt loops. Okay, this one is for... The Glock 19 Olight Mini. If you guys are interested, I can make this holster. It does not have to be in this color. There are many colors. If you go to Three River Kydex, there's a whole colored palette up there. And then if you want something a little bit fancy, you just type in what color you want. Okay, so this happens to be regular multicam, as you can see there. All right, give you a little bit of a look of what it looks like. All right, very simple. Now, I'm not trying to take away from the guys that do this for a living. Uh, as far as the Kydex goes, it's just an add-on product for me. So if you want to buy this from me, that's awesome. Thank you very much. If you, I, if you want to buy the knives, awesome. Okay. If you don't want to buy anything and you just enjoy this ugly mug, then that's fine too. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my stuff here. Uh, there's a couple different things, and then I'm just going to film it. All right. So you need your Kydex. You need your belt loops. We get them from um, knife kits. You need your mounting hardware, screws, nuts, bolts, rubber washers, all that good stuff. You need a good razor knife, obviously. Uh, gloves, press, and you need a heating source, obviously. And then you're going to need always some protection, all right? Eye protection, ear protection, and of course a respirator. Um, I can't tell you how toxic this stuff is, guys, so I'm going to have the fans on. If I have the fans on, that means I can't talk to you. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to work and film as I go. So if you don't hear me talking, it's probably because you wouldn't hear me anyway. All right? So I'll get this started. I'll reposition the camera. All right, guys. So if I don't say it again, just please like, subscribe, share. Go to Three River Blades, Three River Kydex, and Patreon. Thank you. All right, guys, so there are different ways to heat up your Kydex. I use a hot plate. This is one of the longer hot plates, hot trays. I set it to 250, between 250 and 300. It just allows me to put longer pieces of Kydex on there. Or like what's happening here is I have two pieces. All right, so I got to have to put one here, maybe one here. 
and then flip flop them back and forth while they get soft. While that's happening, I'll flip you over over here. All right, while that's happening, this is my press. I'm taking my heat gun and I'm heating up all the rubber and I'm also heating up uh, my mold. All right, so just constantly going back and forth, making sure that everything is good to go. And you don't want this to be cool, you want it to be warm. You want everything to be warm so it's nice and pliable, and then when I crush it or compress it, it makes a nice fit, a nice, uh, nice mold. All right, so I'm just gonna do this for a bit, keep flipping over the Kydex, making sure it's good to go, and then uh, I'll put it in the press. All right, so we're always on a little bit of a time crunch, but as you can see, now it's nice and pliable. All right, what I want to do is make sure there's no crap that's stuck on here either. Sometimes there's dirt particles and stuff on the tray. You want to get rid of that. I also want to heat up a little bit. If it's the edges aren't down, give it a little bit more heat. That's your last chance to get some heat out of it. Okay, get some heat in there. Heat this sucker up nice. Don't want to lose any heat and I don't want to burn it. So I'll put this here. Okay, I like to cover the whole thing, it gives me options. Alright, just make sure you leave enough on the bottom again, get all this crap. If there's anything like dirt and debris and all that stuff. Alright. So this gives me a little bit of options on the bottom nice and soft put this on top try not to move it all that much because you want everything to sit the way it's supposed to and then I have my C-clamps and this is kind of where you get your Wheaties alright C-clamp on that side C-clamp on this side alright and then I just go back and forth just to try to squeeze it. And again, this is where the pressure comes in. There's guys, this I made myself. They are book presses. They have vacuum, um, vacuum tables. I don't have any of that. The vacuum tables are a little bit better in my opinion, but again, I don't have the space to do it. So I just use the old press. Um, again, I'm just doing it as a side add on. I'm not trying to, uh, be like those holster maker guys. I mean, it's cool. They make really cool stuff. And if I had the space for it, I'd probably do a little bit more and get a little bit more uh, into it. But for me, you know, it's a good add-on product. A lot of people seem to like it. I don't get enough that I can quit my day job, but you know how that goes. So that's it. And then I just press, 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 one side, the other side, and then I'm gonna let it sit. I let it sit for like five, 10 minutes. Go get a cup of coffee, and then I'll come back. All right, guys, just want to see what I got. It's been a few minutes. Again, if it doesn't work out the way you want, uh, you could just redo it. So you'll just have to reheat it, do the process over again. I find using a small hammer makes things a little bit easier for me. time let's see what we got all right this is actually pretty still warm uh, so you can see really good definition in there that thing is completely encompassed this is going to be the flat side all right so that's cool so you want this flat against your body and then this is going to be the outside and you can see all that kind of cool definition all right so the next part we're going to do is we're going to have to do some measurements some cuts and all that kind of stuff so i just have to reset up my bench again i'm working within like 300 square feet of shop so i have to take things down and put them up that kind of stuff it happens no big deal all right so what i'm doing is i'm just doing a little bit of a rough line uh, as you can see these things aren't completely symmetrical or square so uh, that's just because sometimes the thing shifts and sometimes as you can see up here the kydex flexes as the kydex flexes sometimes they're a little bit off or a little bit canted that's a hundred percent acceptable what you do is you just use your ruler and try to guesstimate 
just want some rough cuts even if the lines a little bit crooked don't worry about it um, this is kind of what we're doing with the rough estimates just trying to figure out where we can put these things to make it work all right so I'm just trying to find out if everything's a little bit slanted that's fine we'll, we'll fix it okay just trying to get an, an idea of where I want to put these belt loops again you don't want them too low you don't want them too high you want to make sure that um, you have enough space for for the uh, for the magazines but you want to make sure that you know everything's square and flush and straight so I'm gonna make some rough cuts and then I'm gonna kind of narrow it down that's kind of what I like to do okay Just doing two holes real quick I can adjust as needed it's just one two just to hold this stuff together that's all I'm doing Alright, this is right where all the magic comes into place. This is where I got to do all the shaping and the forming and try to get everything kind of uniform. Uh, it's advised to use a very sharp belt. Don't use one that's used because you'll start melting the kydex. What you ideally want to do is shape and cut and get it very symmetrical so you can bend this. All right? You don't have to go crazy. Again, we're just rough cutting. Uh, but what I got to do is I got to turn on all the fans, get my respirator on, and then start working. guys so now that I got it kind of trimmed up um, I put the uh, extra grommets in there uh, typically what I do is I measure two for the side uh, and for the holes and then I just put a couple extra in there just to give it a little bit more strength on the side it's just a plastic and, and it looks better when the seam is completely seamless you don't want to see anything on the side so it looks better at the end um, still using my mold what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat up each side with my heat gun and then I'm going to turn it around and put it into my vise and then I'm slightly going to bend the edges, alright, slightly. You don't want them too tight because if you make it too tight then you can't fit the belt loops in. It gets kind of weird and funky and we don't want that, alright. So I'll show you how to do this, very simple, just use your heat gun. Alright, try not to act, just get the edges, that's all I'm doing is getting the edges. You don't want it so loose that it actually falls out. You just want the edge of the kydex, all right, where we're going to bend this. So ideally you want to leave a little bit more kydex on the side. You don't want to do the bottom. Don't, don't rivet the bottom just yet. Just rivet the sides because you need to have the kydex have a little bit of flex and because you have two pieces there's one on one side one on the other you got to make sure that everything's a little bit flexible so, all right, it's a 
little bit, a little bit more. Also, you don't want to burn it. Pydex can burn if you hit too much. All right, so that's pretty good. I'll flip you around here. All right, this is my vise. Got to make sure you're doing it the right way. Go all the way up to the top and then just bend. That's all I'm doing is bending. All right, bend and hold. I have two rubber stuff, uh, rubber uh, pieces in there. That's just so I don't crimp it too hard. I don't want to destroy it. All right, I just want to make it nice. All right, so I'll adjust this a little bit. Now that's all I'm doing is I'm doing a little 45 degree testing, looking, making sure that, that it looks pretty decent. All right, your kydex will tend to try to slip out of uh, out. That's fine. That's usually what happens because you're sandwiching two pieces of kydex like this, and then you're asking it to do this. So what happens is the kydex will, will come out of place, which is why you want a little bit extra on the side. Don't cut it too tight. Uh, you'll have to adjust it as necessary. All right. And also make sure you have the right side. Make sure this is the back. This customer wanted uh, bullets forward. So if, if he was carrying it on his left side, all right, if he's carrying it on his left side, the bullets are forward. So you can pull it out with that one finger and reinsert. Okay, so that's one side. Okay, you can see that has a nice bend in it. And then I'm going to do the other. All right, so what I got, like I said, you can see now that it's kind of changed. All right. All right, you got a 45 degree angle, which is what I wanted on both sides. All right, both sides, 45 degree angle. Nice. Okay. And then now what I have to do is I have to clean this up. Obviously, this is a big, square, sharp piece of plastic, so I'm going to round all the edges on each side. I'm going to take at least 45, uh, I'm going to cut 45s on this one right here just to make it a little bit more round, a little bit more symmetrical, clean up here, and then I gotta put two more grommets. I gotta put a grommet in the center to hold it tight, and then we have an adjustment grommet that needs to go through here. So first thing I'm gonna do is clean it up. Alright guys, so this is where you're going to see, I'm almost there, alright, obviously it's a little smaller now, a little more compact, see the rear. Uh, when you grind, you're going to get all these little burrs on the outside, all that stuff has to come off, okay. So what I typically do is I just take a very sharp razor knife and I start working those that extra plastic off, alright, just to get the burrs off. I'm leaving the fans on because I don't want all this dust to go in my lungs. So I'm just getting all the stuff off of this. Trying to scrape off all the extra. If there was any extra plastic around the sides, this is where you're going to take it off. All right, so what I did is I put a couple more holes on the bottom and then I did a pass through hole from the back. All right, this is gonna be your adjustment inside here. Uh, but what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that all the edges are burnished. Uh, and in order for me to get to do the burnishing, I just use one of these. All right, this Dremel tool and a little white rouge. You know, make sure you're wearing eye protection. You don't wanna go too fast to where you're burning holes. You just want to get all the scrape marks and, and sandpaper marks and all that stuff out of there. Then once I'm done with that, I'm going to give it a hot wash. 
I'll put all the water in here and again I don't like to seal the bottom I want the water to pass through all the cracks and then once it's nice and dry I use an air hose clean it out and then I will seal the bottom completely okay so Alright guys, so I finished up. So as you can see, I got all the holes drilled and I have just this one right here. That one's going to get a spacer. I have my half inch spacer for that along with some long screws. I also have my screws, my rubber washers and my two plates. Alright, those are going to, I'm sorry, my two belt loops. So the way I kind of set this up, it makes it a little bit easier as I try to preset it and I think these are quarter inch Chicago screws quarter inch and I set this up like this and then I put the rubber washer on there and what that allows me to do is it allows me to hold the rubber washer in place I know sometimes this can be a little bit of pain in the neck alright so I'll put this in here All right, as you can see they'll stay in place ok they're not going to fall out and then pretty much just screw in now with these you can put them either way there's two adjustments I like to put the loop end to the top okay and what that does is it brings this down to the belt line and if you wanted to you can flip them over and it brings it like maybe a half inch lower okay so depending on what you like to do um, you can swap them out that way and then what I'm going to do is just real simple line the holes up alright put my screws in there put my screws in there this should be sufficient regular screwdriver and just tighten it up Tight. All right. What I like about the rubber washers is it gives it a little bit of flex. Also, um, it actually helps push back on the screw. If you guys want to use Loctite, by all means use Loctite. I don't know what this customer wants to do as far as belt loops. I don't know if there's any adjustment involved, so I don't want to Loctite them and then have that person. Um, mess it up by stripping the screws out so that's the only reason I don't put Loctite on these and again it's really not that difficult to take this apart drop a little bit of Loctite on there if you wanted to and you can do that alright so the person that uh, this is going to customer said that you know they are no longer using the battle belt system so they wanted something with the uh, just regular belt on it so we have that okay so you have both of these alright looks pretty good you feed your belt in through there now the issue we have here is although it's in here okay there's no adjustments alright it's not it's not that tight and again even though it has a little bit of click alright it's not tight enough so the way we deal with that is we put a spacer in there alright and that spacer is going to pull the kydex closer All right. So what I did inside there, I don't know if you could see it, there is a spacer. Alright, that spacer goes between this piece and this piece of Kydex. Alright, it's secured on the back with a screw and a, uh, another Chicago screw on this side and a nut on this side. And what that allows it to do is that once the magazines are inserted, they are now secure. Okay, they're not coming out. If you want to tighten the tensioner clockwise, loosen it counterclockwise and what that does is it allows you to get your magazines out at the tension that you require if you want to loosen it you just loosen it up one quarter turn 
comes out a little bit easier, okay? So over time, what'll happen is the Kydex will wear, um, especially if you're working in a hot desert environment or something that's really warm, uh, it might get a little loose, so then you just tighten it up. Again, if there's any issue, whatever, I'll send you out some Chicago screws. Don't worry, we'll fix your holster. So that's pretty much it, guys. All I'm gonna do is buff this up, clean it up a little bit, and uh, it's ready for the customer. I really hope you guys enjoyed the show. Uh, if you want me to do more Kydex projects, uh, put the comments down below. Please like, subscribe, and share these videos. That's the only way the algorithms are going to work to, to help boost up the channel. Make sure you become a Patreon member. Go to Three River Blades and Three River Kydex. Thank you very much, guys, and as always, stay safe.